Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing what I ate this past week. Not every little thing, because that would be an extremely long video, but anytime I tried something new or interesting, I recorded a bit of the process and I'm gonna talk you through it. And this will hopefully challenge me to keep trying new things and inspire you guys to do the same. So I'll make a video like this maybe every couple weeks just to keep you guys in the loop with all of my projects and new recipes I'm trying for better or for worse. There are some failures in this video. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. They're an online learning community. I'll say a bit more about them later, but the first thousand people who use the link in my description box can get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. So now let's get into our first recipe. First thing I'll talk about is sourdough. I mentioned in a recent video, I finally jumped on the sourdough bandwagon, got myself a starter. I got one from Breadtopia, which I'll link down below. And it worked really quickly. I was able, I think, to cook my first loaf within two days of receiving the starter and kind of reinvigorating it and I've been making one to two loaves every week since then. I've tried a number of different recipes. I most commonly have used the one by the Clever Carrot and the feasting at home recipe. So most mornings, I just have a piece of sourdough toast with some sort of spread, you know, vegan butter, avocado mash, or this week I had some leftover vegan cheese ball. You can get the recipe from my previous video, I'll link it down below, but it's just a nut, cheese, cashews, and almonds that I added some lemon and apple cider vinegar and lots of herbs and spices too, and I rolled it in like a pistachio and cranberry crust to make it kind of festive. So I spread a little bit of that onto some sourdough toast, and that was kind of a go-to breakfast for me this past week. I also recently revisited the carrot locks recipe that I made many, many years ago. It was actually one of the first videos on my channel to get like a, a fair number of views. I revisited that. That's from the Olives for Dinner blog. It's essentially just carrots that you roast in kind of a salt crust, and it it steams and roasts them and infuses them with a lot of flavor. And then you thinly slice it and marinate it in some liquid smoke and olive oil and apple cider vinegar. And it tastes really, really good. So I had made that lox to pair with some homemade bagels that I made recently and I had some leftover. So I had been throwing some of that onto my toast as well. I want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's video. I am once again working with Skillshare. They're an online learning community that offers thousands of courses. I've been a part of the community for a few years now, and in that time, I have taken courses on graphic design, business, social media marketing, digital photography and videography, video editing, music production, and more. Pretty much any topic you might have some curiosity about, you can probably find a course on Skillshare. It's great whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity. It's a great way to connect with a creative community and learn more, whether you're exploring new skills or developing previous interests. The course I'm currently taking and learning so, so much from is called Photo Editing, Cinematic Styles in Adobe Camera Raw. It's taught by Elizabeth Weinberg, who is a celebrity photographer. I'm really wanting right now to up my photography game, make everything look a little bit more cinematic. I feel like I haven't taken that seriously in a while. I've kind of stacked over the past one to two years and it's been really nice to learn more and see a little bit of personal improvement in that area again. So the first thousand people who sign up using the link in my description box will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. And then after that, it's only about $10 a month, which I would say is well worth it considering how much is on there for you to learn. Fast forward, I also made some Japanese curry with my sister. This is a dish that we have been making a lot since we moved to San Diego. It's really simple and affordable too, which is nice. Every week we get a produce box through Imperfect Foods and they had given us a lot of russet potatoes and carrots. So I just cubed those up. I peeled the potatoes as well. Then we added those to a big wok with a little bit of cooking oil and lots of minced garlic and kind of sauteed those first. then added in lots of water and we were feeding the four of us who live at home. So we made kind of a big batch and we wanted some leftovers too. Let that simmer for about 45 minutes. And in the meantime, we made like a little meatball recipe with some impossible ground. Again, my sister made these. So she added minced garlic, some very finely minced onion, some vegan friendly Worcestershire sauce. We also added some breadcrumbs. Panko would have been ideal, but we just had some Italian breadcrumbs. So that's what we used. Also some just egg to bind everything together. I 
I browned those in my frying pan and then I just added in a tiny splash of water and put the lid on and kind of let them steam so they were cooked through. Then by this time, the potatoes and carrots were nice and tender, so we added in our curry seasoning. Not only do we use the like store-bought Japanese curry blocks, the roux, but my sister also likes to customize it with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, some soy sauce, some ketchup, and then some curry powder. There's lots of different brands of the Japanese curry roux and you kind of just gotta check the backs because a lot of them do contain dairy ingredients. I just get it at my local Asian market. So you just stir all those ingredients in and it gets nice and thick and creamy and we served it over rice with a couple of those impossible meatballs and it was really, really good. It's definitely one of my favorite um, like hearty comfort food meals during the winter. And I put a lot of scallions on top of pretty much everything. I go through like, three or four bunches of scallions every week. I've started saving the like the ends of them and trying to replant them so I can hopefully not buy as many scallions. Fast forward to the following morning, I mentioned in a recent video, I've really been loving making mocha pot coffee recently. I'm someone who really likes coffee because of the flavor and not necessarily because of the caffeine. In fact, caffeine does not really make me feel that great and I struggle with insomnia. So I usually will do a decaf or a half calf. I've been really getting into more sustainable sustainable living and reducing my waste. So I've kind of been trying to find a homemade plant-based milk recipe that tastes good and has a good texture. I haven't found anything that like really replicates the texture of store-bought soy milk in terms of like frothing capability for coffee. But I will say my favorite that I've tried so far, and I've tried quite a few, is the coconut cashew oat milk by Minimalist Baker. She designed that to kind of replicate the texture of the Oatly Barista milk. Now that froths really beautifully, but it does have added oil, which I think is part of why it's so luscious. And Minimalist Baker wanted to make a an oil-free version. So it's coconut flakes, some oats, and then some cashews. I didn't have cashews that day though, so. I used blanched almonds. You just blend those till they're as smooth as possible and then run them through a nut milk bag. And this is my favorite plant-based milk, homemade milk that I've tried so far because it does have a really nice creamy mouth feel. You get a little bit of a froth out of it. I've been using a, like a manual frothing pitcher. It's kind of like a miniature French press. So you just kind of pump it. And then if you're using like soy or store-bought oat milk, it gets extremely frothy, like cappuccino level foam. But with the homemade stuff that doesn't have like a bunch of thickeners in it, I haven't had that same luck. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know. But for now, this is probably gonna remain my go-to homemade milk recipe. And I have, every time I've made it, been saving the pulp and kind of spreading it out on a baking tray and dehydrating it in my oven, just on the lowest setting and then um, it makes kind of like little chunks of all the dehydrated pulp. And then I just run that through my food processor and you can use it to make cookies, stuff like that. Following day, we made spring rolls for lunch. If you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know this is very much a staple meal in my household. So I julienne some carrots, thinly sliced some cucumbers, shaved up some cabbage. I got some tofu into strips and just browned it on the stove with some salt and pepper, super basic. I usually like to add avocado to my spring rolls just to give them some extra flavor and some healthy fats, but I didn't have any avocados. I made a little almond butter, peanut butter sauce with some tamari, some sesame oil, a little bit of chili paste, a little squeeze of lemon juice, and yeah, it was basically a big fat salad in a rice roll wrapper. I didn't go to the trouble of adding in any rice noodles. And then later we made another meal that's kind of been a, a staple for us on nights when we're feeling kind of lazy. And it's just kind of adding some extra things into store-bought packaged ramen. We get the top ramen, the I think it's Nissan is the brand. Their soy sauce flavors, accidentally vegan. Just make sure you don't get the Maruchan because I believe those, their noodles have, I think milk products in them. And I have accidentally bought those because the packaging looks very similar, but you want the top ramen one. I I really like adding kimchi into my ramen and I actually had a batch of homemade kimchi. I used the um, recipe from the Korean bopsang, I don't know if I'm saying that right, blog, and I'll link it down below. It is not a vegan recipe, but I just kind of made some substitutions. I left out like the fish ingredients and substituted in 
soy sauce and it's definitely my favorite batch of homemade kimchi I have made so far. So I'm gonna make it a couple more times and really master the recipe, tweak it a bit, and then I'll probably share it in a future video on here. So I just chopped up some of my homemade kimchi, put that in the ramen along with some tofu and it was amazing, I highly recommend it. Another thing we made for breakfast was just egg omelet. I, I love just egg. I wish they would sell them in like cartons this big, but Eric made omelets just with some scallions and a little sprinkle of the Violife Colby Jack cheese. Ugh, it's so good. It's amazing. And then I made like a little side of potatoes. What I do is actually I'll wash my potato, prick it a couple times with a fork and then just toss it in the microwave for like three to five minutes kind of depends on the size and it softens it up and then I will chop it and then I'll just fry it in a pan to get it a little bit crispy. I added some onions and red bell peppers to it. Then I sauteed some kale and I added a little bit of, I just got some of the vegan chicken style seasoning from Trader Joe's. It's really good, very savory, kind of like a nice all purpose seasoning. So I added some of that onto my kale and a little squeeze of lemon. And then Eric fried up one of the tofurkey kielbasa sausages. I wanna get back into making seitan and try to make my own vegan sausages uh, just to save a little bit more money and buy less stuff in plastic. But that was our little breakfast platter. It was really good. Okay, so let's move on to one of the recipes that was not so much of a success for me this past week. I, um, earlier in quarantine, I impulse purchased a used ice cream maker, then proceeded to not use it for several months. So I finally decided to bust it out this past week. I really wanted like a, just a plain classic vanilla bean vegan ice cream. And I decided to try to use the recipe from Sauce Dash, who he has a really cool YouTube channel. He does a ton of research and like looks into the science behind the way like big vegan brands make like faux like meat and dairy products. He kind of tried to dissect the Ben and Jerry's formula because they have a, I think they have an almond, almond formula and then they have a sunflower formula. So he uses as the base, some sunflower butter and water to blend it together to make a kind of sunflower milk. He also uses ripple pea protein milk, some sugar, coconut oil to up the fat content, and then tapioca starch to thicken it up and make a nice custardy texture and base to work with in place of eggs, which are traditionally used for ice cream custards. So I mixed all those ingredients together. I tasted it and I was really not a fan of this. Like it was kind of an overwhelming sunflower butter flavor, which I, I'm not the biggest fan of sunflower butter. It's not terrible, I'll eat it, but I don't know. I thought it would be more of a neutral canvas to work with. So at that point I added in some instant coffee powder to hopefully try to mask that flavor. And oh, I also added in a vanilla bean. It's just not my favorite. I didn't really like the flavor and I'm probably gonna try out either the minimalist baker recipe or the one that's on the Tasty website. Cause I think that'll give me more of a neutral, just classic vanilla flavor, which is what I'm really looking for. Definitely a matter of personal preference, nothing fundamentally wrong with the recipe, just not my favorite flavor. Oh, another thing that I drink quite often lately has been homemade water kefir. If you're not familiar with it, I just learned about it too. It's, um, you use these kefir grains or kefir, some people pronounce it kefir, but you use these grains that are kind of derived from a type of cactus, I believe. And kind of in the same way that a scoby works with kombucha, it ferments sugar. Instead of tea, like with kombucha, it's just sugar water. The fermentation time is much quicker than with kombucha. So kombucha for me usually takes seven to 10 days. The kefir takes two to three. And if it were the summer, it probably could take just one day. So I've been making a lot of that and trying to just cut out soda because Eric and I go through periods of being addicted to diet soda and I wanted something a little bit healthier. I had a batch that I just added a little bit of cherry juice to and then I put them in a uh, the swing top bottles that are nice and airtight and you leave those out for another day or two to carbonate, pop them in the fridge, and then you get a nice fizzy probiotic refreshing beverage. I just acquired some unprocessed sugar 
It's called panela. It's my understanding that the kefir grains really thrive when they have a lot of minerals to feed off of. And you know, white sugar has been kind of stripped of a lot of its minerals. So I started brewing my first batch two days ago using the panela and a little pinch of Himalayan pink salt. And I will update you as to how that goes. Near the end of the week, we finished our previous sourdough loaf. So I wanted to try a new one using a little bit of whole wheat this time because up until now, I've just been using regular white bread flour. So I used the Clever Carrot recipe, which again, I'll link down below. And it's just bread flour, water, salt, some sourdough starter, and some whole wheat flour. I do want to incorporate more whole grains and sprouted grains into my bread making. So I'm going to order some einkorn flour, some spelts, and you know, you know, I kind of want to buy a grain mill, which I, I really don't need more uh, appliances for my kitchen right now. But I've just been going like really deep down this like baking and sourdough rabbit hole and you know, maybe like in a couple years, I'll buy myself a, a little grain mill so I can buy myself, you know, wheat and einkorn and, and spelt and, and make my own flour. But I digress. Let's move on. Eric likes to make pasta every Sunday. That's a new tradition we've adopted since we moved. And this past week, he wanted to try replicating uh, like linguine and clam sauce. And a lot of people I know with seafood, they'll use some sort of mushroom. Like people will make uh, scallops, scallops out of king oyster mushrooms. So we ended up using, I have this gigantic bag of dried shiitake mushrooms. I actually bought it so I could attempt to make the avant-garde vegan bacon recipe, which I did make and I did film, but I didn't, I didn't love how it came out. So I want to try again so I can do the recipe justice and I will share it with you guys at that point. But I got this giant bag of dried shiitake mushrooms and I rehydrated those and made a little kind of like fish-like broth with those and a little piece of kombu, which is a dried seaweed. And then Eric sauteed in a little bit of olive oil and butter, some minced onions and garlic. I chopped up the soaked mushrooms at that point and he added those in. He added in some dry white wine and then scooped in our linguine noodles along with a bit of the reserved pasta water just to make kind of a light, smooth, creamy sauce. Add in a little bit of chopped parsley and a squeeze of lemon to brighten it up. And then in the meantime, I was making some zucchini for the side. I just cut it into little medallions, sauteed it with some olive oil, some red pepper flakes, some onion and garlic. And that was a really good dinner. Definitely makes me kind of want to try to make a vegan clam chowder using mushrooms. So stay tuned for that. I made two kinds of cookies this week. And I think that we will be making cookie tins for some of our friends and family and trying to send it to them in place of uh, buying gifts this year. So I might do an entire video of just the recipes we make for our cookie tins. Jasmine and Chris of Sweet Simple Vegan recently released a taste test video from Trader Joe's, all of their holiday stuff. In this video, they taste tested the Trader Joe's Pfeffernusse cookies. Pfeffernusse? It's like a heavily spiced molasses cookie that has like black pepper and stuff in it. And I kind of wanted to try making them myself. So I used a recipe on all recipes. It wasn't originally vegan, but I just substituted out, you know, for vegan ingredients. Flour, lots of different spices, cardamom, cinnamon, ground ginger, nutmeg, cloves, and um, black pepper. Molasses and brown sugar. We used coconut oil, some vanilla, and then flaxseed with some water in place of the egg. I gotta say, I just don't think I'm a molasses person. I don't really like gingerbread. I don't love uh, I don't know. And because I really hated the pfeffernusses so much, I immediately made myself a batch of shortbread cookies to make myself feel better. I'm now able to find the unsalted earth balanced baking sticks in my stores. I never used to be able to, and that's very cool. I really just need to get back to making my own homemade vegan butter. It would be better for the environment too. Um, That'll be a project for next weekend. Shortbread is fairly easy to veganize because it usually does not contain 
eggs. You just need to substitute in vegan butter and it's just usually flour, some sort of sugar. I used confectioner sugar. Um, although you will, will wanna make sure you're using a vegan friendly sugar because fun fact, if you didn't know a lot of just regular sugar you're gonna buy at the grocery store is processed with animal bone ingredients. So I used um, powdered sugar, flour, a little bit of vanilla extract. I tossed in some maple extract too, just for fun. And then uh, cream, butter, and sugar together, add everything. And then you have a nice sticky dough that you can pat out into a rectangle. I pre-scored it and pricked it with a fork. And then you bake it kind of at a lower temperature for a longer time and oh, shortbread. Oh, I ended up kind of on a whim revisiting the Dalgona coffee trend this past week. That's just equal parts instant coffee, sugar, and hot water, and you just whip it and whip it and whip it forever. Until it's nice and fluffy. And I spooned some of that over my homemade cashew coconut oat milk. Another of my favorite meals I made this past week was this beans and rice. Eric is really good at making beans in the Instant Pot. So we had some red beans this week. We soaked them overnight and then he pretty much slow cooked them all day in the Instant Pot. He added a lot of spices. Let me try to remember. Actually, I wrote it down. So we cooked them in water with a little bit of the Trader Joe's vegan chicken seasoning. Some of the Trader Joe's umami seasoning, which has like mushroom powder in it. Black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, three kinds of chili powder. He used ancho, chipotle, and then just regular chili powder blend. Some dried oregano, a bay leaf, and yeah, just slow cooked those for, I wanna say six to eight hours. And then shortly before we had dinner, I whipped up a really quick batch of rice. I used basmati rice because I find it gets nice and fluffy and I just browned it in a little bit of vegetable oil in a pan preliminarily with some diced onion. I took one of the chipotle chili peppers that comes in the adobo sauce in a can and I just chopped it up into a paste. Added that along with some tomato paste cooked it until it was kind of coating the rice and then added in water. I usually will add one of the Edward and Sons vegan chicken style bouillon cubes. We're out of those, but I, I go through so many of those. I need to order more. But in the meantime, I've just been putting the Trader Joe's vegan chicken seasoning on everything. I added some garlic, reduced it to low, let it simmer until it was cooked. And that was a really good dinner. I just love rice and beans. You know, sometimes you forget how delicious those like really inexpensive staples can be. Just add some spices and yeah. Near the end of the week, we kind of start running out of produce from our produce box. Uh, so our dinners start looking kind of hodgepodge. We made some pan fried tofu, kale and collard greens and red pepper. Serve that with some steamed basmati rice. And then we also made this very hodgepodge rice noodle dish, kind of inspired by drunken noodles, but just made some rice noodles, fried up some tofu. Again, we eat a lot of tofu. Added some minced onion and garlic, julienne carrots and bell pepper. And then we made a really quick sauce just out of some soy sauce and some coconut sugar, along with some chili paste. And yeah, it was not glamorous, but it was quite tasty. And yeah, I just do whatever I can to not waste produce. So if there's something that I kind of forgot about in the back of my produce drawer at the end of the week before we get our next produce order, I just chop it up and add it to a stir fry or a noodle dish or what have you. So that's it for a very long video, a little uh, recap of what I made this past week. Hopefully it gives you guys some good ideas. If you have any requests of things you'd like to see me test out in future installments of this video, let me know. I'm all about that. Check the description box again for all of the links to recipes that I referenced in this video and also for a link to get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership for the first thousand of you who used the link. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.